question that often comes up is, what can I do if my partner is not supportive, right? And it's a really great question, and at the same time, it brings up a whole lot of questions, right? Because if your partner is not supportive, um, there will definitely be an aspect of needing to sit down together and have a, an open and honest, kind conversation about what is it that you want and what is it that he wants. Sometimes men don't want to change, or women sometimes also, don't want to change the way that they do things because they don't see, and there's no kind of major reason or uplift or you know something that's going to kind of be like, yes, this is something that I truly want, therefore I'm going to go and do all of the things that I can to make it happen. And that's a reality. So a question that comes up as a result of a lack of behavior of, of you know, a partner not being supportive is understanding whether he or she wants the same thing that you do. You know, you may really want to have a baby and they may not, right? They may be in a situation where for them that couldn't be the last thing that they had on their mind or could be the last thing that they had on their mind or the last thing that they really wanted. So understanding that you both want the same thing is going to be the first place to start. If you ascertain that you both do want the same thing, the next big question is on a scale of zero to 10, you know, where 10 is, I want this more than anything in the world and zero is, I don't want this at all, right? How much do you want this thing and how much does your partner want this thing? Because they may be at like a five out of 10, right? And you may be at a 10 out of 10, which obviously at a 10 out of 10, you're going to be much more um, proactive, much more able and willing and wanting of making changes, of doing things and, and improving your odds of creating the healthy baby of your dreams. For your partner, if he or she is at a five out of 10, it's not gonna be the same kind of level, level of motivation, right? And if the level of motivation is different, then you need to understand why, right? Another good question that you could ask is what would make it a 10? You know, right now you're at a five, but what could make it a 10? What would make it a 10? Would anything make it a 10? Because again, if there are things that need to happen in order for that to happen, you need to understand what those things are. If nothing would make it a 10 from a five or wherever it is that they are, then you need to actually ask yourself again the question of, do we want the same things? right? Because you may not be wanting the same things and you may need to face the fact that you both want different things out of the relationship. And that might prompt an end of a relationship or it might prompt a whole nother conversation to happen around this. Um, I think that most partners who are supportive, they are supportive of their partner because they love their partner, because they want to see that person be happy, but they also want that for themselves, right? And when there, when there is alignment in where two people are coming from, that's absolutely going to be the place where you can work together well as a team. If you're not working well together as a team, you need to figure out what are some ways in which you could do that. There is a fantastic book actually that I like to recommend for all of my patients. It's called The Seven Principles to Making Marriage Work by Dr. John Gottman. And his research on relationships and certainly what makes relationships fail so as to reverse engineer what makes them work is groundbreaking and highly, highly recommended because it's in these conversations where you're both not really 100% sure of what it is that you can do um, to be on the same page where things like this will really help and really guide you as to what to do next. But you know, open and honest conversations, I really think that's the best place to start. So be open, take responsibility, don't be, you know, telling your partner, but you don't do this. It's like it maybe a good way of going about it and approaching it is, you know, it makes me feel like whatever when you do this. Or I would really, you know, it would make me feel whatever if you were to do this or whatever. But also understanding that each person has their own needs, wants and desires and that it's not going to be your nagging that's going to get you know, your partner across the line. You need to start to figure out a way of inspiring and enrolling them into this vision that you have 
for your family life together, for what it is that you want to create. And that will help to change behavior, that will help to change motivation and do things in a different way. So I hope that helps and I wish you the very best of luck with enrolling and inspiring your partner on the way to creating the healthy baby of your dreams. Bye for now.